Victory Lane is being set up in anticipation of rolling a car out there, whether it's now or after 600 miles. And looking behind our grandstand to the west, there's blue sky. But looking to the south, there are still quite a few of these thunder shower systems that appear to be headed our way. I'd really like to get this race over with on Memorial Day, if at all possible. <laughs> well, we do know that will happen. And we're off to Dover next weekend. Since we've passed halfway, this race will become official sometime today. Well, they don't have to call it. Oh, no. They don't no. have to. I mean, it just, they just they have that option. There are, counting David Gilliland, who did not pit and is on the tail end of the lead lap, 28 lead lap cars. Should we be able to go back to green at some point? But as you said, that crowd is gathering and getting bigger in hopes of an announcement from NASCAR. Now, it's always been NASCAR's theory on running races, and they're very consistent. They won't start the race unless they believe they can run the full distance, the advertised distance. And they'll make every effort to get the whole race in if the weather and other external factors uh, cooperate. Sometimes we run up against a curfew. Sometimes the track and the local uh, highway patrol get together and, and say we can only run to this point in time before we have to let these people go. But otherwise, they want to get this race in just every bit as badly as the folks who are in the stands and those of you watching at home. Well, it's it's 625 Eastern time, local time here, and, and it, this place is going to take, the way it's saturated now, close to two hours to dry, as it gets darkness, uh, there's just so much moisture in the air. I, I think we're getting so close to that point in time. And, yeah, Mike, we actually still have 42 of our 43 starters out on the racetrack. The only one in the garage, Jerry, is Mike Bliss in that 09 car. And he went there with a vibration. Now, Max Pappas went to the garage, but he was only there for about five laps. Came, he had lost a lap on the racetrack and lost another one getting back yeah, out. But otherwise, everybody who's here and in the race is here to run all day. Among the stories of the week coming forward, who will be in the 36 car next week when we go to Dover? Scott Riggs and Tommy Baldwin are parting company after this race. That was announced this morning. You know, we gave those report cards out earlier in the broadcast. You saw Jeff Burton just a minute ago walking through the garage area and street clothes. Right now he is the top-running Richard Childress car, 25th. So their, their woes continue here at Lowe's Motor Speedway for Richard Childress Racing. Thank you. An impressive day for two of the three rookies in the field. Joey Logano right now is ninth, and Scott Speed has been on the lead lap all day. He is 18th, while the third rookie contender we just mentioned Max Pappas, who spent time in the garage. And, you know, I know we document wins and top fives and top tens, but with the competition today, a top 15 or top 20 for anybody is a pretty solid day. You look at Scott Speed in 18th. Remember, he did not qualify for the race at Darlington a couple of weeks ago. Actually got in Joe Nemechek's car to race that race. David Rudiman started this season with a ride, but without a full-time sponsor. Darrell, and it was somewhat questionable whether he would even be here racing this car on this Memorial Day. Yeah, and I thought Michael did a smart thing. He went to his old buddies at Aaron's, Ken, uh, Ken and those guys, and said, uh, you know, uh, it'd be a sh David's going to win a race this year. They almost guaranteed it. And, and if, if you want, it'd be a shame for you guys not to be a part of that because you've been with us all the way through from the very beginning, back when Michael was racing from behind his house. And so Michael, I think, almost <laughs> said, if we don't win a race, I think I'll give you, I might even give you some of your money back. But I'll tell you, he came through for him. Ken Butler. Well, David Rudiman has won the Coca-Cola <laughs> 600. So cool. Welcome to the Lipitor Post Race Show. How about that? It's the first win for Toyota at Lowe's Motor Speedway. It's Rudiman's first win in his 75th career start. It's Michael Waltrip's first win as a car owner in Sprint <laughs> Cup competition. And Matt Yoakum, the celebration's begun. Yippee! November 11th, 1962. That man that walks in to give David a hug, his father, Buzzy Rudiman, made his first and only Sprint Cup Series start at Golden Gate Speedway in Tampa. He finished 10th. It's been almost five and a half decades till the Rudman family finally could close the deal and score their first win. Congratulations. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, 
What are you going to say? I mean, it sure, certainly wasn't the prettiest win, but, uh, you know, somebody's got to win these things. And uh, Rodney, Rodney Childers made a great call, told me to stay out, said we're, uh, we need to come in and work on this thing to make it as good as we need to anyway, and we're probably going to lose some positions on pit road, so let's just stay out here and take a gamble. And uh, i got to thank uh, Aaron. So we've got Lowe's Foods on here. we got to thank Sprint and most of all the fans for uh, hanging out here all day long, and uh, they've been uh, troopers here. And, Feels really good. You don't envision when you envision yourself winning your first first uh, Sprint Cup race. Um, you know you envision it a little bit different, but man, you'll just, it's, it's so hard to win these deals. We just take them anyway. We can get them. When you look at along the way, so many ups and downs. What's the one moment that you think you're going to take back from this season, this win, this day, this special moment with your dad? Oh, the fact that he's here. I mean, uh, you know, we, we always talked about the fact that we were going to we were going to mess around and win one of these things, and he wasn't going to be here, and so. Uh, and fortunately, every, whether it's a truck series or a nationwide series or now in a cup series, uh, he's been there for all of them. So uh, that feels pretty good. And a congratulations from the big man up in the booth, D.W. Oh, uh, yeah. I got to thank D.W. He's the one who gave me my first shot. And, uh, and um, I know he was going to fire me or he probably wanted to, all the stuff I was tearing up. But I appreciate uh, the whole Walter family for sticking beside me. Michael Walter gave me an opportunity to go race in, uh, in, in the cup series uh, when nobody ever even would have thought of giving me an opportunity. So, uh, you know, we, we got this one today, and uh, hopefully the, the next one will uh, – We'll, we'll earn it. Yeah. Congratulations. The trifecta of first, driver, owner, crew chief in Victory Lane. <laughs> David Ruderman has become the sixth Sprint Cup driver to score his first victory in the sport's longest race. What about that trophy, though? Golly, 250-pound trophy with all those names on there. And David Ruderman won the 50th. Coke 600. All I know is it should say David Rudeman slash Rodney Childers on that one. <laughs> slash Mother Nature. Yes, sir. We'll be right back. With a 14th place finish, Jeff Gordon padded his lead over Tony Stewart, who wound up 19th. Kurt Busch was 34th today. Kyle Busch moved up a spot in the points. So did Ryan Newman. Matt Kenseth and Carl Edwards each gained one position, while David Rudeman sits just six points back of the top 12. Twelve races, eight different winners so far in this Sprint Cup season. Tonight on Fox, House at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, followed by Bones. And next week, Major League Baseball on Saturday. Dodgers Cubs, Braves D-backs, Twins at the Rays. And NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing from Dover, presented on Fox by McDonald's, Sunday, 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific. You know, we talked about it. Every crew chief on pit road had the opportunity to do the same thing that Rodney Childers did, but uh, Rodney was the one that rode the dice, and he's the one that goes to victory lane with David Ruderman. You don't win if you don't take a chance, and the man was a willing to take a you chance. You follow the leader, you'll follow the leader. That's right. Thirteen drivers were running in front of David Ruderman when that last caution came out. They all went to pit road. Ruderman did not. He went to victory lane. So proud of my man, Rudy Tootie. Boy, there's going to be a party in Mooresville tonight. And Spanky in the game. Yeah, and Spanky's all right, too. NASCAR on Fox congratulates David Rudeman, winner of the 50th Coke 600. Promotional considerations provided by...